Q&A time. Ask questions, and I will try to answer them. Um, Tyle put some questions in the chat. Oh, yeah? Uh, he asked if there's any room for 3D sculpting for the class, if yeah. you're doing two months or more. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care how you guys submit your work to me in terms of like whatever, um, whatever tools you might decide to use. All I care about is if they're good. Okay. Uh, and his other question was uh, if you've used Lazy Nozomi and if you find that useful. I do use Lazy Nozomi, and it is useful. It like uh, it. It's I use it only for the subtle. I think I have the subtle one in there and it's not even that much it's like seven it's because there is like some jitters that you get from photoshop you guys know what i'm talking about it's like if you don't have it watch let's just so that's with it on and this line is not necessarily you see there's like a little bit of a bump and sometimes like if you go slow you know just the combination of photoshop and just like your shakiness of your hand will get in the way. But if you have it on, see, it just straightens those lines out. You know? So I end up with, I just leave it on subtle. I, I rarely use the other stuff, that, which are really cool. Like they have like elliptical tools and all this great stuff, but I just don't use them as much. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, I, I I was wondering if you if you go through like patches where you're just like oh my gosh like I really don't feel like working at all and sort of sure how you get over it. Uh, yeah, I think everybody has those moments. So what I generally tell people is what I'm about to tell you now which is um, cool. And you, what you need to do is stop thinking about how to keep yourself motivated or how to keep yourself inspired, right? And I used to do talks about how to find motivation, how to find inspiration, right? Because I, knew, I realized it's something that people struggle with a lot. But I, I, over the years, I've discovered that really what you need to teach people and what I teach people now is that motivation and inspiration are very fickle. Okay. Mm. Meaning that, um, they, they come and go, right? You go to, uh, you know, Indicade, you get super inspired to make some games, then you don't make a game, right? Mm. Like this happens all the time. So what should you rely on then? Well, and although inspiration and motivation are actually very powerful tools, and I highly recommend you still try to find ways to get them, get them, right? But what's more valuable is patience and resilience. Yeah. Patience is simple, right? Like you, you understand. So you're you're specifically. I know you want to get into indie stuff, right? Indie gaming. So you understand. Yeah, things take time. Yeah. yeah, and uh, do you agree that it just takes, uh, you know, some time to get good at anything? I, I asked this. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Yeah. So, so knowing that fact, and that's the beautiful thing about facts, is that they're true no matter what you believe, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, if you believe, or if you trust the fact that, uh, as long as you keep doing something you'll get better. That's patience, right? That's, that's the understanding that, you know, even though, you know, uh, I don't feel too good today, uh, I'll have the patience to keep going, you know? Yeah. And then resilience in combination with patience is the idea that, okay, but there are going to be days where I feel really crappy. Like I don't feel like I want to do anything at all. Like you were just mentioning. Okay. And that's, that's where resilience comes in. Resilience says, you know, yeah, it sucks, but this is what's going to make me great. Mm. 
Because if it was easy to work hard, if it was easy to achieve your goals and your aspirations, right? Yeah, and everyone would do it. Then everybody would be doing it, absolutely. And it wouldn't be valuable anymore. And it wouldn't be valuable anymore, absolutely. You understand? So yeah. it's not a matter of what can you do to do things on the days you don't feel like it. It's a matter of just do it anyway, even if it's just a little bit. Yeah. Even if it's only half an hour. You understand me? Yeah. Like, people always say they don't have time. Trust me, you have time. Everybody yeah. has time, right? People say, well, you know, there's this and that. I mean, I guess Jessica, she generally didn't have much time. But even I yeah, deciphered. <laughs> yeah, and I even deciphered that she did have a few hours here and there. But it's just real sketch, you know? But she changed her circumstances. She understood that that's no reasonable way for her to get growth. But, you know, she's in very rare circumstances where she lives in winter storms, apparently. Every year, it's like, it gets super cold. These are justifiable, justifiable um, you know, excuses to have. <clears throat> so, you have to understand that there's, there's, there's time, you know, and then also, um, you don't have to put a lot of time, just a little bit. Mm. You know, people assume if they don't put like 17 hours and it's not worth doing at all, and that's the problem. It's like, no, it's always worth doing. You know, uh, yeah. so let me give you a, a good story uh, based off of some research I read a long time ago. There was this group of kids that they took out of elementary school that were about to go to middle school, and they placed half of these kids into schools that were more inclined, um, that were more inclined to teach people how to uh, do music. And it was the other school, which was just normal middle school. Okay. So they sent these kids to these different schools and the group of kids that they separated were, there was nothing, anything special. It wasn't like they took the talented kids and put them in the talent school. Right. No, this is straight down the middle, right? It's equal as they possibly can make it. Understand? Mm -hmm. And after a year, they checked in to see what the kids were doing. You know, so they looked at the kids who went to the normal middle school. And they found that, you know, the kids who were interested in music got better. You know, they got better. Um, and the kids who were not, you know, stayed the same. They were at the same level of skill. Okay? And then they looked at the kids who were at the middle school, who, which was, like, more along the lines of uh, making musicians out of kids. And they found something very, very clear. <laughs> that the worst of the kids at this music school were better than the best of the kids at the other middle school. Mm. Okay? So there's a very clear, like, this: if you go to the school, you're going to come out like a rock star. You're going to become really mm. good at in music, uh, regardless of your interest. And so they try to figure out why. So how do they get kids who were potentially not interested in this all of a sudden to become badasses? Right? And these kids are probably still not interested in it. They were kind of forced into this. Right. Um, and the result was clear. One group of kids in the regular middle school, the group of kids who went to the regular school, they were asked, they were asked to do a minimum of like half an hour to an hour and a half a week in music training. And it wasn't necessarily that they were training either. They just had to be in class. So they didn't have to, they can do it nothing. You understand? Yeah. And in the other school, there was a minimum of about an hour and a half a day. You know? And they were practicing during that hour and a half. Mm. Every day. Okay? Mm. So they were spending about, you know, at minimum like uh, eight to ten hours, and at a maximum fifteen to twenty hours a, a week, practicing their music because they would have homework too that would be required to learn and play music at home. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what ended up what ended up happening then, right? What why? Like yeah, why was this? 
Well, why was hours, it? Right? Yeah, why why was this the the, the defi defining factor? Why did the, the researchers focus on this? Well, they just basically said, plain and simple, talent is not real. Just got to spend a lot of time on something, and you just get better at it. It's just this is so obvious, but this this experiment just made it even more obvious. And you can just look at the experiment on a on a grander scale. You can just look at it from just there is like an, an intense amount of examples. And I, the more and more I do research, the more and more I look into this, the more and more I teach people, the more people try to throw someone at my face and say, well, what about this person? And I look it up and I'm like, oh, you know what? That person is no exception, it seems like. I, I am not um, delusional. There, there will be people that have a true exception to, the, to, to these rules, right? They don't have yeah. them by heart. We, we can't think of ourselves as just being exceptions all the time, right? Like yeah. It's way more likely than and, and normal. Exactly. Yeah. It's more likely that you're just a normal Joe with average skill set, right? Those people do exist. Like, yeah, of course. But to think that the, the majority of people who are successful are these people are, is, is naive. It's completely... Um, it's completely false. Everybody who becomes amazing uh, becomes amazing. Almost even the ones that are have exceptional skill uh, or kind of born with it, because they are um, well practiced. That's it. It's just lots, yeah. lots of practice, finding the right types of teachers at the right moments in their lives and um consistently putting work in it's just a it's a numbers game if you really think about it because the more yeah. you practice the more you give your opportunity for your brain to kind of take it seriously and the more you 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 look into it and research the more you can find opportunities to find things that are relevant to your interests you know yeah. it's, it's just as that simple because if you're not looking into it every often uh, or every other day then you're you're going to miss out the opportunity when someone posts a workshop that's like next door to you because that day you decided not to look into it anymore, right? Uh, the less you talk with other community people, um, then the more opportunity you're, or the, the more you're missing out on potential opportunities to meet somebody that might uh, offer great uh, opportunities, right, in the future. It's just all, it all adds up, right? It's kind of like what you, you, you say with the game jam, right? They went, like, a group of people went to this game jam, and they didn't realize this is a thing, and they just decided to do that instead, you know? Yeah. And uh, to criticize your, your previous game studio, the people that are kind of iffy about that, uh, they shouldn't look at that as, a, as an opportunity to avoid that kind of workflow. They should look at how can they develop a similar or evolve right. into that or find examples. Like, it is great to be skeptical, like I said earlier, but be optimistic. There must be an alternative solution that appeals to everybody. Yeah. So they can yeah. maintain the talent, but at the same time, um, do the kinds of things that they're into. Right. And so, yeah, just but by sheer practice and effort, these types of things get revealed. Um, I, I felt like I had a very strong work ethic before. <laughs> and uh -huh. then when I moved to the US, it was like, I had no friends here. I didn't know anyone. Um, and like all of my family and friends were back home in uh -huh. South Africa. Um, and then like my girlfriend was there too and I was just like super down and I just, I felt like it was, like I, I knew, I knew I should be working. I, like if, if I'm moving all this way for work and then like dropping the ball after moving, then it's like what was even the point of it all. Sure. Um, so I like, I tried to practice more um, and I just found it like more and more difficult. So like eventually, uh, so when I went back to, back to South Africa over Christmas, um, I, I broke up with my girlfriend because I was like, oh, this is like part of the problem, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then like I tried to be sort of okay, fine. If I if I can't manage like a painting a day, then I'll just like I'll do one a week and trip it trip away at it or something. Because uh -huh. um, like just like a little bit is better than nothing. Um, but I still felt like I was sort of stuck, which is why I took this, because I was like, oh man, if I have like assignments to do, it'll like force me to work again, and like maybe I can turn it back into a habit. Sure. And that's, 
kind of my goal is to teach people not just to paint better, but also to develop a good mindset to keep them working. Mm -hmm. I, I have a mantra of it's not just about teaching you how to paint, it's about teaching you how to keep painting. Yeah. And so, yeah, hopefully this advice that I'm giving you really kind of, yeah, because this idea of uh, it's everybody else or it's some external purposes, these things definitely contribute to um, detrimental growth. Yeah. <clears throat> Only if you let them. Nobody's forcing yeah. you to not paint, <laughs> you know? And so you just have to do it. But you're right to suspect that if you just had somebody telling you to do work. It was, it was also it was also like uh somewhat an attitude thing where like I'd I'd stacked up so much pressure on like on painting good work instead of like also just having fun doing it. Um Yeah. When when I was doing some of the thumbnails, I was like I I felt like I was so slow and I kept on like redoing work and starting over and like sure. erasing and starting over. Um yeah. and I was I was in a hangout with a friend of mine who took your your class a while back. Okay, cool. And he was just like, just, just enjoy it. Like, have fun. Do paint stuff that you like. Mm -hmm. um, That's good advice. And like, yeah. And then, and then I felt like I was so much faster too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, there's this this kind of phrasing of um, uh, quant quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've discovered that quantity fuels quality, meaning. The more you do something, the more opportunity, again, you, you allow yourself to get better. Hmm. There is uh, another story I'll tell you, and I'll take on any other questions, just let other people have a chance. Yeah, I don't want to be monopolizing. I just I don't really You're see right. any popping up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's usually generally not a problem because most people have these same concerns. So people usually share the – they want to know the same answers. So don't worry. I, uh, but I do want to make sure that other people have an opportunity yeah. to talk. Sure. Um so I'll tell the story. So there's this guy who um, was trying to experiment with his students to see if um, he can s find a, a correlation between quantity versus quality. So he said, okay, look, I want everybody in my pottery class, I want you guys to basically um, do – as many pot like, in, like I'm going to take half of the class and you guys are going to do as many pots or pans or dishes or whatever, or vases, okay, mm. as many as you can to reach weight. That's how much, that's how I'm going to grade you. I'm going to grade you by weight. So the heavier your, your stuff is, then the more, um, the more credit I'll give you. So 40 pounds is an A. 30 pounds is a B, et cetera. Okay. Okay. And so then the other half, he said, you, all you guys got to do is make one really awesome pot. That's it. So this is the whole qu quantity versus quality. Yeah. Right? And the results were great because what ended up happening was he took all the pots that everybody did collectively. Okay. And he just mixed them up. So you didn't know who did the quality ones versus the quantity ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he mixed them up and he had the other staffers and students of the school basically judge and vote mm -hmm. for their favorite pots. And the ones that ended up winning, the majority of the votes, were the ones that came from the quantity group, the ones that just had to make 40 pounds worth of pots and mm -hmm. pans. And a lot of the reasons why people liked them is because they were unique and interesting and wild, mm -hmm. you know. And and if you did look at them, the reason why this was true is because people were discovering that it was really hard to make 40 pounds worth of pottery. So they would have to find creative ways to make 40 pounds fit on like one plate, you know. Yeah. So they'd create like tubes and twists and turns and really extravagant patterns where the ones who were just making one pot – they were just making an average pot, and they were so flustered that it wasn't perfect. They kept on getting frustrated, and so they would end up yeah. doing less work. And the ones that were able to kind of accomplish it um, just ended up making the average-looking pot 
just just happened to be a really symmetrical perhaps hmm. you know yeah I see the same argument for like uh, doing game jams a lot instead of like throwing all of your effort on like this one ultimate mini game that this is this is true I see a lot of my uh, peers get very um, burnt out when they work on one game for like five years yeah and so yeah, yeah I agree. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna mute myself because <laughs> No, I'm I'm done, and that's that's pretty much the point I wanted to make to comment on this idea of, you know, you get you are overly worked up on like I need to make best work possible. Um, no, you have my permission to suck in my class, so just try, experiment, fail. You know, do things that your your own subconscious and your mentality wouldn't let you do, in my class, and I'll help you get through. It. So those are good questions. Don't worry, I wouldn't stress out. I'm sure everyone enjoyed them. Yeah, who's next? Anyone else? Yeah, use the mic. It's easier. <laughs> uh, okay. So I have a friend who, uh, she's been to three different art schools, and uh, cool. She's kind of like not wanting to go to school anymore, so she sounds about right. Sorry. Right? Yeah. So so she's, like, she's stopping school next year, and she's just gonna like apply for um apply for jobs and stuff. So what um. Like what? What's That's unfortunate? Do you think? Like say that again. I, I I was talking. I was confirming oh. what you were saying, but I couldn't hear you. Say it again. Uh, like what? Uh, what approach should she take next year? Like, cause she's taking her you're year good. off. To... Yeah, you're a good friend. You're concerned about yeah. her. Okay, yeah. so so a few things I want to make a point of. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, wh where where does she live? Uh, she lives in. I don't need a street uh, address. Uh, in general. She's moving to Oakville next year, which is close to Toronto. Well, so you guys are Canadian. This is what's, yeah. what's going on. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I don't need like a street address or like right next to <laughs> a certain restaurant. No, I don't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> regions. Okay. So uh, Canada and most most of the world. Uh, first world countries um, have this dilemma and it's college <clears throat> okay so there's a few things uh, is, is college, higher education in Canada is it uh, affordable is it free I have no idea uh, it's less than the states well, yeah. <laughs> everywhere is less than the states yeah. like, my question is is it is it privatized at some level uh, High schools are usually it's are. still expensive, like on average about probably 10k. Yeah, it's still a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's reasonable. You can, you don't have to pay a lifetime of debt. Um, okay. Still a lot. <laughs> so, so there's still a level of privatization is the problem. Okay. Here, here's, here's, a, here's kind of what I want to get at is that. A uh, higher education should be free, and yeah. and, and free sure. and free as in the government pays for it, and then the government gets its money from the taxpayers, right? I, I hate this bullshit that people say like, "Oh, socialism, socialism," and I'm like, dude, <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's like, well, then stop driving on government roads, you fucking moron. Stop <laughs> if your house is on fire. Just be like, hey, I, I have a, I'm gonna call private firefighters. You know, if someone robs your house, call them, you know a militia, a private militia. <laughs> don't call the cops anymore since you don't believe in socialism. And so, uh, <clears throat> you know, you guys have like snow plows, right? Yeah, I guess like, hey, don't plow my yeah. snow. <laughs> Keep the government off my parking lots. <laughs> you know, um, listen. Of course, the government shouldn't be in control of every little thing you do. That's that's obvious. Yeah, I do know some people like that. <laughs> and 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 if you talk to them, bring these arguments up and see what they say. <laughs> yeah. And so, the, the it's, this thing is that we the reason why the government does work in some regards is that taxpayers do pay for these things, and we, and we are the ones who are the boss to the government, not the corporations. That's how it should be. We should be telling the government that we don't like the government is in our hands, not the other way around. <clears throat> and when you start privatizing things, that's when it gets out of hand, and we become a dictatorship or authority 
egalitarian government. But let's get back to the subject. So, 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 so schools have this dilemma because once you start to privatize, you start to shift the, you start to shift the atten- intentions of the school to being more um, like their incentives are more along the lines of just how do they make their shareholders happier. Right. So they, they, some of these schools make their programs easier, simpler, you know, mm-hmm. at the cost of the, that level of higher education. Do you understand me? Yep. See, the way that it should work is that you go to school to find your vocation. Vocation mm-hmm. as in the job that will be your life's work. I mean, something that yeah. you love every day for the rest of your life or for the most yeah. of your life. You might change your vocation. And you can because school is free. <laughs> okay? Yeah. And it, it's that's acquiring more knowledge will only benefit your growth. Okay? Yeah. But people don't do that because it costs lots of money. Yes. And so they feel like they've been shafted if they don't if they graduate without any real career or real alignment to a, a job in this world. <clears throat> and so then when I I talk to people about this and I said, listen, so you have to understand the system is is definitely built against most of us. Yep. And it is discouraging, and there's nothing we can do about it as of now. But the reality is she had access to an art school. She has access to the internet. She has access to these tools. There is actually no reason why she can't be what she wants to be. Mm -hmm. The problem is she was duped into thinking that, 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 that education was all she needed. That's the problem. Yeah. Okay. She was, she was misguided. Mm Mm-hmm. Because you can graduate any art school or college or any, really, any school. I mean, I'm starting to suspect that a lot of politicians are just goddamn morons. Um, and it demonstrates just, again, a product of our failed education system. Just because they have a college degree doesn't mean that they're awesome, <laughs> okay? Uh, she's understanding that now. But... Yeah, okay, so so um, the, the kind of the the conundrum that she needs to understand is that just because the school system failed her doesn't mean that she's, she's, it's over with. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she can definitely go get a job, but if she had this in her, that this, this idea that she wanted to be an artist, she's going to find that when she takes these jobs, it's going to be more depressing. And then when she tries to get back into it, uh, she, she might end up like where just Jessica is, right? Like working so much. Right. (laughs) That's why I feel for her. That's why I feel for Jessica. That's why I'm on her team. Team Jessica. Make <laughs> Jessica a badass. Uh, and and Jessica's not the only student that I've encountered that has this problem, for instance. This this is this happens all the time. Okay? I I find that like a third of my students sometimes, like every month, I always have like one or two or more who have already tried other stuff and they hate it and now they want to get back into what they really like. Mm-hmm. And your friend seems like she's going to be the kind of person that does that. Like two or three years from now, I might see her in one of my classes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. After she's t- taken that bank job or whatever job that temporarily pays for her bills and her lifestyle. Because she, feel- she won't feel fulfilled. You understand me? Yeah. And that's the thing that I want her to prevent from happening yeah. is this lack of fulfillment. And she, if she keeps this route up that, where she's just, I just need to find a job. Um then uh, she might miss the bigger picture. And get back to what I was saying earlier, this this problem of humans being short, so short-sighted that I was bringing up with Jason. Yeah. You know, so, so, such a short-sighted insight of just like, well, I just need to make money right now. And I'll just ignore the rest. No, you, you got to invest. I'll see you later. See you later, bud. Um, you got to ignore the rest. Right? And you had to get to... Um, you gotta ignore this, like this this idea of I just need to start working to make some money. Like, of course, if you need money right away, then get that work and take care of your own. You know, take care of what you need to do. 
I'm not trying to say don't like just drop everything, get full into art. I'm just saying you got to invest time into your future as well. See, the reason why a lot of these people, um, so like America, we're, we're running into this dilemma, and I'm doing a lot of research in this politics stuff because it's, it's starting to become very important to me. You know, literally every day since since Trump's been in, in the office of president, literally since every day, every day since he's January 20th, and or I think maybe a little bit, I think January 24th is when the muzzle ban came into fruition. And I realized, oh, this is a real thing. This is a real problem. So I thought it was government, same old government, you know, just new face. No, it's new face and shitty government. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, all right, this is, um, this is a problem. And so I don't know much about it. You know, my intuitions was like, you know, I thought were pretty accurate. I had a really strong intuition about what I felt about a lot of stuff, but I don't know enough. So I just did research and research and research and, Every day since the 20th, 20th or 24th, I've been watching um, political uh, videos and reading articles uh, mm. pretty much all day. I do it while I'm working. I do it while I'm cooking. I do it while I'm showering. Because, mm. <laughs> you know, I, I always make a strong point to you guys that if you want to get good at something, what do you got to do? Yeah. You got to do it a lot, right? So if I want to get good at politics, <laughs> then I got to be knee deep in that shit, right? Which is... It's super depressing, by the way. It's like when you start to discover uh, like how how corrupt it is. Like everybody knows, like there's a level of corruption, but like, dude, it is it's pretty bad. It's bad. <laughs> and so, um, so anyway, I, I I just been researching more and more, and you know, one of the problems that's related to this question again, getting back to the point, is mm -hmm. that you know, you know, a lot of these people that are losing their jobs, like these coal miners, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, these these coal miners don't want to work in coal because they love it. You know, they'll say it on a, on the right. news, or whatever, just because they don't want to lose their jobs. But if they could have another job that would replace their coal mining job that paid just as much, if not more, and they didn't work in such terrible conditions, yeah, they would take it, obviously. <laughs> so how come? how come these people are being screwed? And, you know, I have a lot of conservative friends and I'm actually conservatively minded when it comes to business and thinking about, because it, it is actually the most rational thinking. That's why I'm not a Republican or a Democrat because I don't, I just look at everything with the evidence that it exists. Right. And so, so the conservative point of view of, you know, people just need to find their own. Yeah, I agree with that. Right. I don't agree with uh, giving everybody participation badges, for instance. I think you're sending the wrong message, right? You're, you're sending the message of entitlement, that people are owed something if they just try. No, no, no. Everybody can try minimally. It's about trying consistently and constantly. And that's where, like, my more um, leftist comes into place, which is I'm all about equal opportunity. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Yeah. Meaning that I think that everybody should work for what they want. Like, none of you guys will achieve the goals you guys are looking for if you don't try. And I mean yeah. really try. The difference between okay. you and your friend and me is that I put, have 10 years a head start of you guys, and I've been painting nearly eight to seven hours every day since then. Have you? No. no. And that's why you're gonna, it's going to be hard-pressed for you to compete against me. That's just the reality. That's just real yeah. life, okay? No one in their right mind is going to hire a subpar artist for the same rate as me if they can hire me, this is how it works. And I, I don't make any disillusions to my students about this because it's very important. And that's a very conservative type of way of thinking. And it's just true. Okay. That's why I don't make any disillusions. But what's also true is that people just don't have equal opportunities. Some people in America have really poor internet connection or no internet at all. There are some people in this country, in America, that have no clue that concept art is a job. Yeah. Okay? So what I'm saying is that those people should know that there's more than just being a coal miner. You understand what I'm getting at? I, yeah. I, know, I know this full-heartedly because I come from a small town. It's called Barstow. And in, in the town of Barstow, there's only really like two jobs worth trying to get. It's either working for the railroad or the military. And the yeah. next job after that is like retail. 
So like either work like on the railroad making really reasonable wages, or you work at In and Out. <laughs> there's a there's a there's not enough gradation of opportunity there. You hear what I'm saying? Okay. Like my yeah. friends that still live there, they don't have much opportunities because mm. of the proximity of where they live, and that's what sucks. And that needs to change. But what I'm trying to say is your friend doesn't seem she has that problem. And so she has to take advantage of this situation, okay? Mm -hmm. Because uh, that this is what I'm trying to get at. Is like I, I, don't, I don't feel as bad for her as I do for people who literally are like their day by day is they thinking about what they're going to eat tomorrow, okay? And you got to make this clear to her. You say, listen, AJ just said that you actually are in a better position than like 90% of the people on this planet, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and that's just true. And you need to take advantage of this, and you can live a happier life. And then wh whatever success you do, try to find a way to give back and find a way to give to people who don't have these advantages. Mm -hmm. There's a great story of a guy who learned how to be a, 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 pole, a, a pole vaulter, or no, 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 a javelin thrower. Uh, and he's from Kenya, where they don't sell javelins, <laughs> okay? let alone having gyms or places where you can learn how to become a javeliner, right? It's not a thing you can do in Kenya. It's not a thing. It's not a sport. And this guy did it all on his own with the limited access of internet that he had by watching YouTube videos, like I think an hour a day, every day, for years, since he was a kid. And then he became uh, an Olympic javeliner for, for Kenya. That wasn't a thing that they had, and they just decided... He just decided that's what he was going to do, and he just did it. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing story, man. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. It demonstrates that some people take advantage of their opportunities, and his opportunities are much lower than her hers is what I'm trying to get at. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like she and you and me, we were privileged, highly privileged. Yeah. If you have running water that can be either cold or warm, okay, um, and you have a heated, uh, heated or air conditioning. If you have heated, if you have running water, heater or air conditioning or um, a refrigeration or water access to these types of things, and the internet, you are amongst a very small percentage of people on this planet that are doing really, really well. Yeah. May, in the context of like Donald Trump, you're doing really badly, right? But you have to understand that is like the point zero 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 one percent of the world. Yep. <laughs> okay. The rest of us, the people who live in the middle class, lower to middle class, upper middle class, right around there, uh, we're very privileged. And our problems. That's why I love the phrase first world problems, because it's always a way to humble your your thing. So she has first world problems. This access to education, even though it cost a dime. Um, the fact that she had an art school that she could go to. Demonstrates that she has that. So what you should tell her is, if she wants to make it in this industry, right, that she should refocus all her efforts on learning how to make a much better portfolio. And if she doesn't know what that is, then tell her to go to Art Station. And I usually tell my students too. This is back to the conservative state of mind. If you're like, oh, well, I don't know what I need. Like, what's the minimum amount of quality that I need to have in my work? Well, I'm going to show you right here. Like. This is the kind of stuff, if you look on here, you see nothing but great work, right? So ask yourself, is your work or her work as good as Roman's here? And Roman did a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, then keep at it, man, until the one day it's yes. Okay. You know, are you guys' stuff as good as Wei Fang? Wei looks pretty good, actually. I want to check it out. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely gonna follow this guy. I bet he's Chinese. Let's find out. Yep. There he is. There's this is like over detailed, super beautiful people. It's a very Chinese thing. <laughs> you know, looks like he's working too. He's not looking to be hired. He just has his portfolio out here. And it makes sense. He's really good. You know? 
and quality comes in all shapes and sizes. Like, I think this is pretty good too. Mm. Um, I believe like style, super stylized stuff, you know, that's also good too. Oh, this is pretty cool. Power Rangers. Oh, man. I'm actually kind of excited to watch it tonight. Not a lot of people aren't. <laughs> actually, I'll probably have to watch it later. Probably tomorrow. Probably. My kids. I was just going to watch it by myself. <laughs> it's like this 32-year-old man amongst children. <laughs> and it, oh, Anyway, it, you get my point? Yeah, yeah. So okay. she she and everybody in this class, you have to reach a quality that is, you know, comparable to the best in the industry. And, and ArtStation is a great mm -hmm. platform because unlike places like DeviantArt, which is, is also really good, DeviantArt has everything, right? ArtStation is very clearly our, our, our field, right? Like concept artists, digital 3D artists, you know, there's a lot of people that are in our wheelhouse, you know? Mm -hmm. So these are pretty pretty clear, and so you have to reach those level of quality. Is what I'm trying to get at. Okay, if you mm -hmm. want to make it as an industry, and it just takes time. I'm yeah. also very encouraging that it's, it's something that's possible for everybody. I don't think, um, and specifically everybody that takes my class, because yeah. you, you guys are taking my class, means that you had enough money to spend. You had five hundred dollars just lying around to spend to take my class. Um, you're on your 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 mobile device or your computer or whatever technology that you have that other people just don't. You have internet access, so you're amongst the people that are going to do better in this industry. Okay, I already know that just from you. You've already been vetted by just taking my class. Okay, mm -hmm. so I have a, I have a larger confidence that most of you guys will do better. Uh, rarely have I met a person that's like. Like I'm on the street right now. I have nowhere to live. I'm homeless, and I'm borrowing this this cell phone. I'm renting it, or not cell phone, but I'm renting this this laptop with my money that I get from the streets for my street paintings or something. <laughs> yeah, rarely do I meet somebody that's like really struggling. You know, I, I hear I see a lot of people struggle. They have like they work a lot, or they have um, uh, non-supportive parents or. Uh, family dynamics there, there are things that i see and those, those are real problems and i'm not trying to diminish those problems neither am i trying to diminish your, your friends problems right. i'm just trying to make a very strong point is that you know um it could be worse and so she should take yeah. advantage yeah. of her opportunities yeah uh yeah before you ask your question rachel let me just make this last point um so the first step that she should do is start to just do that, like work to, on building a portfolio and mm -hmm. start going to conventions and meeting people and, and start surrounding herself with people who are going to support her, uh, including yourself. It seems like you're very supportive. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to add her to our Discord, she's welcome to join, to hang out, right. and meet people online. Yeah, the Discord's not just open for the students. It's open for everybody. All right. All right thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hello. <laughs> you only get 10 seconds to ask. Oh, gosh. I'm just kidding. Okay. So uh, <laughs> last week for the other mentorship, I had an assignment to finish up three of my paintings. Um, and I think you wanted me to turn those in by Friday, but I'm not. I, I can try, but it'd be, would it be okay if I turn it in next week instead hmm. so I can work on this more? <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, it's fine. Okay. I'll allow it. Uh, should I? I should just submit it to you on Discord sometime. Yes. Please. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's your third and final strike. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm just joking. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Going once. Going Hello. twice. Oh, there you go. What's up, buddy? Uh, okay, so uh, I have this friend who does art. 
Um, Wait a minute. Very... Are you guys just talking yeah. about friends that and you're, you're doing one of those things? You know what I'm talking about? Like in a cartoon or like, I got this friend, but it's actually you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead and ask your question. Uh, well, he's like, he, he paints quite a lot, but he, okay. he's not really too studying. Uh, okay. And I kind of want him to study more because uh, I don't know, we're good friends, I guess. So uh, I, I've tried like talking to him and convincing him, but I can't really find a good way to get through to him. Uh, like, do you have any ideas for ways to convince him? Yeah, so if you have like um, if you have friends who are hard to to kind of talk to, it's, it's mostly because you guys are just friends. And you guys know each other really well. And there's like a little level of like, like, who's this guy to tell me? You know, <laughs> it's like, it's really, yeah. it's, it's, it's really superficial stuff, but it's, it happens. And it, it happens to the best of us. And so, um, you know, so that, the best way to kind of go around doing that is just use examples. Like, all right, like just say, you know, like you, you, you paint a lot, but you could get better if you were to focus in. And then they're, if they're like, no, nah, that's fine, I'm good. You know, you should be like, well, um, like, who's your favorite artist? And then if they can name them or show you a picture of them, and then just say, okay, so what are the differences between your work and their work? What do you think is better about their work than yeah, you wish you had in yours? And usually they should be able to determine that. And then you should just say, yeah, you should practice more of that. So that way you can start to achieve that level of skill you know yeah and, and that's hard to argue against it's like you know and that's how i converted a really stubborn student of mine once he was just never would listen to me and then one day i did that i was like look like who's your favorite artist because i kept on telling him he needed to work on his values and his anatomy and he's like no nah, I'm, I'm really good at my anatomy and values i study that all the time i was like no you don't you don't understand i can see that you don't know enough of it like i can see you understand me? Like I can see it that you don't do it enough. And he's like, no, nah, like, I don't think that's the problem. It must be something else. It has to be. And I'm like, no, it's, it's that it's, it's actually very simple. And so, you know, sure enough, I, I brought up that, that question it was like, who's your favorite artist? We looked at it together and I say, what do you think their work is doing that your work isn't? And they're just like, yeah, his lighting is really good. His forms are really awesome. And his anatomy is like spot on. And he's like, oh, I see now. You know? And yeah. it, it had a, it took that for me to get, convince him. But usually um, logic, empathetic, like be empathetic to his cause. You know, try to, to understand that he or she might need, you know, a little bit more room to just let them make their own mistakes. Uh, but the really best way to demonstrate this is just start becoming better than them. And then they'll start to say, Hmm, what are they doing? <laughs> you know? And then you say, yeah, I just study. And that's usually what happens. That's what happened to me and my friends. Cause I, I was the worst amongst all my friends. And all of a sudden I started whooping ass and they're just like, wait a minute. Like, what are you doing? I'm just like, I'm just painting, bro. And uh, they're like, well, what are you like? What are you painting that I'm not? doing and i'm like oh i just do this and that and that and this and you know i'm a i'm very sharing so i didn't really care to share the knowledge i'm also a believer that if you share that knowledge it only makes you better at the knowledge that you're sharing right and and not only that like if you're afraid that the knowledge that you're going to share to somebody is something that if they were to understand that all of a sudden now you're going to be out of the job right then maybe you didn't have anything worth of a lot of value anyway, you know, and you have to consider that and something to, to can pursue. Like I know that I could tell you guys everything that I know about painting and drawing, but it, you guys won't get there unless you spend uh, at least a few years practicing it. You know, there's, there's no way you guys will get it over in like two days or something like that. It takes time. And what I can do is demonstrate and, teach you everything I need to teach you before the month's over but at the end of the day I try to demonstrate to you guys that it takes some real effort you know and so yeah my, my advice to you though with your friend is just like just try to break it apart to him in ways where he can hopefully understand um, and see for himself right but here's another thing advice to you 
which is uh, don't be a backseat designer either. If he doesn't ask for critique, then don't give him a critique. There's no real, real reason to do that. All right. Because uh, um, my friend said it the best. He had a really good Facebook post about it a long time ago. He's like, a critique should be like a vampire, like an old traditional vampire, where vampires aren't allowed to kill you in your home unless you invite them in. Right? So he's like, treat my critique treat critiques like that like don't eviscerate my work until i invite you to eviscerate my work Ouch. you know and so if he's like if he's happy and he's doing whatever he's doing then just let him be happy even if you think you could do better <laughs> it's not up to you you know yeah but if you feel like they're struggling and they they don't know why then 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 it's your that's an opportunity to get in there and say well let me tell you why you know, but at the same time, you know, let people make their own mistakes, make them learn on their own. Sometimes it's the only way people will learn. That's a good question, though. I hope your friend, wink, wink, it's over. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Also, do you have like a formal education as a teacher? Like, did you go to college for it or something? No, nah, but that's that's a good question. There should be like schools just on how to teach teaching. I agree with this. This is like back to the whole government-run education. See what you could do with a, a government-run education platform. Because here's here's a, how privatization would work, and why people are like, oh, you know, privatization competition. Competition, bro. Yeah, and that's competition only works if you're selling cell phones or like the next iPad or something, right? Like people don't need this shit, you know. So competition works because you can. It's like some people that want have have access to the internet and the computer or whatever, they can afford all this stuff at a very cheap cost. They just will have a cheaper product, but that won't put them at a large disadvantage against someone like, let's say, me who has a super nice computer and a super nice internet connection and super nice phone. Uh, maybe other than the fact that if we were playing Counter Strike or something, I'd have just a faster, <laughs> you know, frame rate, you know. But these are all kind of like meaningless, you know. Th these are privileges and luxuries. You understand? But education shouldn't be treated that way. Like it shouldn't be a luxury to have access to the greatest teachers out there, right? Like for instance, it's a luxury to take my class because you would have to have five hundred dollars. That's a lot of money for a lot of people. You know, and the only reason why it's that much is because um, this is my number one money maker, right? And it's it's cheaper though than your large school because I'm the only one who's really running it. I'm the only one that's employed. Um, well, and John is employed too, but I pay him with uh, my tutorial money. You understand? So it's yeah. like uh, I can I can afford making things super cheap and competitive because you know. I am the only one, <laughs> okay? But the problem is, is it, it should be that they, the government should pay me so that you guys can go to this college or my, my school for free. That's how it should be. So that you taking my class should have costed you nothing. You understand? except for one thing, which is that you need to be qualified. Do you understand? And that's a better standard to live through with education than do you have enough money? Did you take out a big, a big enough loan? Because not a lot of people can do that. Right? But you, if you do it based off of um, the, the, the qualifications, right? then it's a better system. So that means that you could be super dirt poor, live in the middle of the street, but if you have internet access and you have really reasonable drawings that go through the qualification level, then you can then you can get part of the system. You understand? And you'll be on the waiting list, and you'll be guaranteed to take my class as long as you just wait, right? And that's a much better system. And so then you flip that back to kind of what your question was, 
to the teachers, then I would have to be, the government would have to regulate and see that I am a teacher that can actually genuinely, you know, teach people how to do the things that they do, which I would absolutely be able to qualify for, right? Yeah. And then I could be certified, so then I can give you guys pieces of papers that certify your education, and it would actually mean something now, you know? You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's how it should be. When you when you have a diploma or any kind of certificate, it should have some value, right? Right now it doesn't because tens of thousands of people go to these schools and then they can just pass with average grade, grades and credentials and just be average artists or people. And then they graduate and they're like, why don't I get jobs? I don't get it. It's because you're average, bro. <laughs> that's the whole back to my conservative point of view right no one in their right mind is going to hire you when they can hire the other person who's so much better than you just because you have a degree doesn't promise you anything it doesn't mean anything but if i was certified teacher in this system that i talked about and i get paid from the government and i am required to every year show my results show my ability to improve people's ability to become a concept artist right which i would be able to i've dozens if not we did a thing out of facebook where uh out of the 500 people i think that's on there and some of them are just people that are friends of ours and others are students that i've had there is like a good 80 or, or or 90 of people that just posted on there and i know there's plenty more that didn't post that got jobs or found some sort of career in about a year or two span you know and this is only taking one or two months of my class for some of these people you know and I can be like, go to the government, see, like I get people jobs, you know, and I do it in a reasonable way. And it costs very little for you, government, to pay me. And I can ask the government for more money, you know, and then put like build us a, a real school around it. But the way that it works now is like this real weird bullshit accreditation. So they, they keep you in school for longer so then you pay more money. Right? Which, by the way, I don't think that's a bad idea to be in school for long periods of time. But if that's the case, it should be free the whole time. You know, I, I don't think uh, being a concept artist will take a, a month, obviously. And I don't think being a concept artist will take three years even. All right? But I definitely believe that if you had a really good system and really good teachers and really good um, way to qualify and to, to certify its teachers and then get more of them out there, then you would have more opportunities for these, these students to become epic and then become the next generation of badass artists. And that's, that's the problem is that our economy would not be suffering as much if everybody had equal opportunities. And because then if everybody starts making more money, right, then everybody will be spending more money. And if we spend more money, we put more money into each other's pockets. And then if if we also make more money, then we put more money into our income tax. And that tax will then go into the government. And then the government then says, let's make better educational platforms. Let's create more jobs with the brightest and smartest people. Let's talk with these people and see what the future is going to be. But we're not doing that, right? And it's very unfortunate. Uh, you know, a lot of the jobs are going to be automated, even like some of the art jobs, like, you know, uh, 3D jobs might, like if you're just a 3D like an artist, I think those jobs will be replaced by automation. You know, like taking this concept, for instance, that I painted, usually you would have to hire a modeler, right? I mean, there's already technology where you could take just a 2D image and it will find a way to make it a 3D image. It's still really basic and kind of garbage. But with all technology, with time, it won't be garbage anymore. Could you imagine that all I had to do was just paint a, a, a front and a back and maybe a side, which I can do really quickly, and then put it into this a application, and it will make a fully 3D model, right, that is usable, and it's already rigged and anim can be animated. And then I can just take my webcam and move around in my little bedroom. And it will use my emotions to animate it. Like this technology will be eventually in people's homes. I, I don't doubt it. So that then what does that mean? So that whole industry is going to be gone. 
yeah, you can 3D print <laughs> the model that you, you painted or drawn, and then it will be in uh, your garage. Yeah, you can just print it out. And so, uh, I mean, e Elon Musk is already on top of that. He's already talked about we need to find um, – he said that a single salary needs to be mandatory and we need to start looking into doing that right away uh, because of automation. Single salary is this idea around that everybody, even if you don't have a job, you get money from the government. So for instance, like everybody here would have like $10,000 a year just for just being, let's say, let's say you're an American and that's what we have built in. We don't have that, but let's say it was, you know? Just being an American, you get ten thousand dollars a year, and it's not that that money is wasted. It's no people spend that money, and if you put that money, it will eventually get back put into the taxes because people pay through sales tax, right? When they buy stuff, you know, whether it's food or common goods, right? So some of that money will still get put back in, but what this will do is it will help people not. Because if we don't have something like that, you're going to have tons of people homeless and without jobs and careers. You need to have some level of comfort so you don't become a criminal, you don't become homeless, you don't go into poverty, you know what I mean? And start taking advantage of the opportunities. And I believe in all that stuff. So so getting back to kind of like this idea of uh, a sis better system, so like, yeah, I, I actually agree that like, there should be a system for me to be going through some sort of cert certification, right? So that way you guys get even more notability from saying I took Anthony Jones's mentorship for a month, right? That would actually hold more true. But my strategy right now, since that system doesn't exist, um, is just to make you guys badasses. <laughs> it is irrelevant that you took my class. You just you are just you just took all the tools that I taught you and eventually became badass. You don't have to say I took AJ's class. You just are a badass people to see it in your work. And so a lot of times uh, people who go to arts uh, art center, the half of the reason why they go is because it's just one of the most reputable art schools in the industry. And there was a point where it was truly reputable just by going there, you were just a badass. But because they're in the governmental system now and they're privatized at some level, they, they've made sacrifices because they have more attendance People going into the school, so they're not controlling that ability. But if they, if if the if the educational system was different, and there was more opportunity to allow federal funding to schools or people like me who would want to be a part of a school that did, or like people like John Park and James Paik, if the federal government could go in there and say, "We'll pay all your stuff. You guys become an accredited school, and we won't." change anything about your model you guys run it the way you do but these are the certifications that uh, you need which are practical ones which is uh, actual improvement in students work and growth they say that these types of things are in place but they're obviously not because I, I went to AI and I saw a lot of people who graduated from these schools and it, it's garbage like they don't have good work and again it's because these teachers are a lot of these teachers are not very good some of these teachers are recycled students, people who didn't get jobs in the first place, and then now they're back teaching people how not to get jobs. It's it's just it's it's all screwed up, guys. <laughs> so so take it upon yourself to get that further education, right? Because in the world we live in, we don't nobody nobody cares about us. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. People drop out all the time. I went to Sony Santa Monica. And I was a college dropout. It was me. I was a college dropout, and then so was Eric Ryan. And then the other two, or other four uh, artists, two of them went to Otis, Luke Berliner, and um, Cliff Child. They both went to Otis, and then uh, uh, Jung Park and Izzy Madrano went to Arts Center, and we were all at the same level. John's a dropout too. School's too expensive, man, to go there and with no guarantee to the future. So the thing is, is you guys pay for my class, you get the knowledge you need, and you're done. Like there's no loans, <laughs> you know, you're not, you're done. 
you got the education you, you'd wanted and uh, you're done. You don't have to worry about it. And that's how it should be at some level. And that's what a federal government should do for the, for people like you guys. So that's why you got to go vote for these sorts of things. Don't, don't be afraid of these arguments of socialism. <laughs> it's like, no, this is the product of a capitalistic government is the stuff that we were dealing with these terrible things, which incre decreases the, the middle class and increases the wealth of the wealthiest people on this, on this, in this country, in America specifically. It's true all around the world. Anyway, all right, I'm going to end the class now, guys. Good questions. Good talking. Appreciate y'all. So you guys have a good weekend. Be sure to use the Discord to chat with one another and to, to hang out and give each other insight. You know, don't be afraid to do Google Hangouts with one another or do any kind of, um, you know, just group activities to kind of keep yourself motivated and inspired with one another's help. The Discord's great for feedback outside of the class, too. So be sure to, to post there often to just get some insight. And uh, with that, laters, guys. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.